It's long past time I made this video, and this is really directed at a huge source of infighting within the libertarian movement, this distinction between minarchists and anarcho-capitalists. I intend to show in this video that the distinction is fundamentally meaningless and the whole debacle nothing but an enormous waste of time. The difference is fundamentally a semantics issue. In Lord T. Honkai's video, Minarchists, Why You May Already Be an Anarchist, he gives what I believe to be the common definition of government among anarcho-capitalists. In all fundamental and all important ways, we agree with each other. What do I mean? Well, when an anarchist talks to a minarchist about his views, the usual reaction that he'll get from the minarchist is, oh, but we need courts, but we need police, but we need uh, military and all that sort of thing. But this presupposes that the anarchist position is that we shouldn't have those things. And, um, people, it isn't. I'm gonna tell you flat out, it isn't. It is not like that at all. I don't oppose the idea of having police, courts, or military, and I don't know of any anarchist who does. Nope, not at all. What I dispute is the idea that these things need to be run by a violent monopoly, that that's the only way it could possibly work. Here's the thing. I don't actually want to end the Federal Reserve. I just want to end the legal tender laws and get rid of the requirements that national banks be members of the Fed. If the Fed can hold their own in a free market amid the competing currencies and banking systems that would spring up, that are already trying to spring up, then good for them. I don't want to get rid of the Fed. I just want to get rid of the violent monopoly power. I don't want to take down the FDA. I want to convert it to a non-profit organization with an advisory role, not regulatory, sort of the way UL works, and let people make competing drug certification companies to compete with it. The way Met Labs competes with UL. That's it. I don't want to set the charges and blow up all the government schools, as cathartic as that might be. I want choice. I want to end their being funded through theft and the threat of violence. I want parents to be able to choose the school. And no matter how it's paid for, as long as it's voluntary, I want the money to follow the child. So whatever schools attract more students, get more money. And if other schools are languishing, they need to start doing a better job. As opposed to this race to the bottom we have now, where the failing schools get more money, because obviously that's where it's needed, and if we just give them more money, they'll improve, even though they never had. That's incentivizing failure, people. All libertarians, whether minarchist or anarcho-capitalist, believe in the non-aggression principle. By definition, I mean, you're just not a libertarian if you don't. Yes, unlike Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives, progressives and right-wingers and whatever else have you, libertarianism is based on principles. If you don't conform to those principles, then you don't fit the definition of a libertarian. So what happens when you remove the violent monopoly power from the state? Hawkeye and other anarcho-capitalists say that you don't have a government anymore and that you're in a stateless society. They point out that anarchy simply means without rulers, and without a violent monopoly, no one can rule over you. But that's not how most people view government. It's not even how many libertarians view government. The good folks at Downsize DC make a distinction between government and the state, and the consequences of this are very interesting. They define the state capital T, capital S, as a coercive monopoly with the power to use violence over a geographical area. Both minarchists and anarcho-capitalists agree this is what we have now. But what is government? We use the word all sorts of different ways. Something that prevents a car from going over a certain speed is a governor. All sorts of private institutions have a board of governors. We talk of things governing the outcome of all sorts of things that are completely non-coercive. Downsize DC actually makes the claim that the U.S. government, in scare quotes, is actually a state and not a government at all. Quote, An institution that commits crimes is not a government. If you or I assault, steal, or defraud, we are criminals. The same moral standards must apply to government. After all, it's merely a group of people, and no group is so large or so special that it can magically turn wrong into right. The state is not a government. The state is an uncontrollable criminal gang. I think we've had it backwards. We've been talking about reducing the size of the government, when in fact we should have been talking about creating the first 
true governments. What we need are governmental institutions that shun initiated violence and only use violence defensively. A true government, by this definition, wouldn't arrest people for filming police in public or shut down lemonade and hot dog stands. They wouldn't even have the power to do it. They certainly wouldn't have the power to wage war or engage in drug prohibition or anything like that. They'd only have the power to defend us from criminals and foreign attackers under the same moral rules that give any of us the power to do those same things. In fact, we'd have quite a few governments, which would specialize in different areas and even compete with each other. Some would specialize in police and security services. Some would provide defense and dispute resolution. Some would set the rules for education, and as a parent, you could choose which one was best and send your child to a school that followed those rules. Whereas the state, as Downsize DC points out, cannot be a government. A government is there to protect you from crimes, while the state commits crimes against the people it's supposed to protect daily, whether it's taxing their income, making their children pay off the debt, putting someone in a rape cage for having a few ounces of a plant, spying on people without warrant, or giving favors to cronies at the expense of others in the economy at large. If you or I did any of those things, we absolutely would be committing a crime. What happens when a government, scare quotes, that's supposed to protect us from crime starts committing crimes itself? It ceases to be a government at all, and we're just left with the state. That is what anarcho-capitalists and minarchist libertarians alike want to get rid of. Anarchy means without rulers, not without rules, not without order, and not without organization. Government is organization, rules, and regulations that people follow of their own accord because it's a good idea. The state is neither of these things. So when an anarcho-capitalist says we need anarchy, and a minarchist says we need small government that eschews the initiation of force, they're really saying the same thing. So let's end the semantics and the infighting and start working to create the free, stateless society we all want, with a government's, plural, we're happy with. As for me, I just want the initiation of force gone from all public policy. And if you have an organization that provides these functions peacefully and voluntarily, then as far as I'm concerned, they can call themselves government or Pinkie Pie or whatever they want to. I really don't care.